more than 25,000 undocumented migrants seeking asylum in Chicago over the past 15 months. And a temporary tent that was going to be set up apparently is on pause because the land it was on had toxic chemicals in the soil. So you've got the states putting a hold on that while you've got the contention uh, seeming to grow between the states and the city. While uh, city aldermen are saying, all right, it's it's enough. Uh, Brandon Johnson, the mayor of Chicago, he needs to fire those who are involved in all of this. Uh, So uh, welcome back, Bishop on Air, uh, hanging back with you back live uh, after doing a uh, a few days as a guest host on WMAY. Enjoyed the time there, but I missed being with you guys each and every weekday morning as well, uh, especially with a what seems to be a larger audience, uh, especially whenever we segment these clips out. Um, I'm blown away by uh, the support, uh, the comments. Yes, there's a few technical things we could need to work out uh, uh, making all this happen uh, in my home office all right so yeah thanks for thanks for hanging out uh, but regardless uh, we've got uh, we've got even more to tackle all right so uh, a lot of taxpayer dollars are going to the migrant crisis we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars and it could be upwards to a billion dollars governor JB Pritzker recently said that it's possible that the legislature when they come back in January could take up a supplemental appropriation to further deal with this because the city and state States continue to spend tens of millions of dollars every week, if not every month, and hundreds of millions of dollars over the past uh, uh, 15 months. So uh, you had Brighton Park up in Chicago, where uh, it was a site that the city had picked to build a military style base camp tent, and they had an environmental impact uh, report done on the soil. They didn't release that to the media or to the state of Illinois until last minute on Friday when it came out. It showed, oh boy, uh, all right, there's some uh, toxic chemicals in that uh, uh, in that uh, soil at Brighton Park. Uh, so apparently, some mitigation efforts were attempted. Uh, But Governor J.B. Pritzker was asked about that and the relationship that he has with Brandon Johnson, uh, as media reports indicates that uh, it's not the best of relationships. Uh, Here's Governor Pritzker earlier this week. Uh, Let me uh, make sure this is up. We have a good relationship with one another, and I know the media would like to. Every time there's a governor and a mayor of Chicago, when you occasionally have things you're working out together, they want to turn it into they hate each other. Now, there have been mayors and governors in the past that don't like each other. But the truth is that we get along, that uh, you know, we have a lot to accomplish. Chicago is an important economic driver for the country, not to mention for the state of Illinois. Uh, and I've really made it my mission. You know, I've had now three mayors that I've worked with. I've made it my mission to make sure that the relationship is good. Even when you disagree occasionally on something, you just need to work it out. And whenever we have disagreed, we have worked it out. So I feel really good about the relationship and about the future working together. We do share one overriding concern together, and that's lifting up the working people of our state, making sure that people are doing well, that families are thriving, uh, making the investments that are necessary for that. And so we, you know, that's a great common ground to work from. Show the governor uh, kind yes. of downplaying that there's uh, some some conflicts between Chicago and the state. But after that environmental impact study came out, uh, the governor, he put a halt on the process of building that out in Brighton Park in Chicago uh, while the uh, environmental investigation continues. The IEPA, of course, um, is reviewing that. Um, there's a pause that we put in place uh, pending their review and results of that review, which will come out. Uh, sometime very soon. Sometime very soon, we shall see, but a pause has been put in place. Uh, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson being asked uh, about this whole situation earlier this week, and uh, NBC5 Chicago had this posted on their YouTube channel. It has been substantiated that being safe by third-party validators. And again, the contract that the state of Illinois went into with Garter World as they continue to build out on this site, um, there was no indication throughout this entire process um, that a standard or a different methodology um, was preferable 
uh, by the state of Illinois. Now, as far as you know, plan, our plan is still very much um, alive. As I said, um, that you know, as we continue to remove people out of police districts, um, that assignment that I've given to my administration, we're working through that. And again, from 4,000 people that were sleeping outside or in police districts in an airport, we've re uh, reduced that number significantly down to 500. And we're going to continue to assess sites because the mission is still very much alive. We have to make sure that this migrant crisis and this mission as you all know, is an international crisis. Um, in fact, um, we have to continue to plan ahead. It's, it's imperative. Uh, this time last year, between November and December, eight buses came between two months this time last year. We've received over 80 buses alone just in the month of November. And so it's clear that, you know, forces that want to continue to send people to the city of Chicago, that I've always been clear that we have to be forthright and plan ahead. And that's what we're going to continue to do. So he says that there are, you know, plan A, of course, and there's plan B, C, D, and F. Uh, but that wasn't enough for several Chicago aldermen. Uh, Alderman Ray Lopez and Alderman Beal and another, uh, they uh, they released a letter that uh, they, they essentially said that some of the city's leaders in this need to resign or be fired. Uh, so Alderman Lopez, along with Alderman Beal and Alderman uh, Napolitano, uh, in this letter say the city of Chicago needs individuals who are serious, deliberative, and collaborative in addressing the ongoing migrant asylum seeker crisis that began in August of 2022 and continues to this day. Members of the city council, philanthropic community, and everyday Chicagoans want efforts that are respectful of their taxpayer dollars being spent by your administration to address the humanitarian crisis. What we have seen in Brighton Park, however, does not show members of your administration are being either serious, deliberative, or collaborative in addressing this issue. Taxpayer funds are now wasted after a failed attempt to build a highly cancerous soil uh, without permits, without true community engagement, without a plan that's respectful to those whom so many uh, performatively articulate sanctuary for in our city uh so therefore they uh, they signed this it wasn't just those three it was several others uh you've got uh, the the list of names of people that they want to resign uh, and again this is a letter being signed by anthony uh, beal raymond lopez and anthony napolitano uh beal and lopez uh, held a news conference yesterday to talk more about this uh here's beal uh spelling out uh, some of why he thinks that uh, these individuals need to be let go from the johnson administration and let's uh fire that up for the resignation of an entire team of the mayor's administration because of their lack of uh, leadership, their lack of ability of getting things done and totally wasting taxpayer dollars to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. This is a site where the city knew had contaminants but was forcing this issue down the throats of the community that did not want it. The community warned the administration that there were contaminants here and it was totally ignored. And so when you have people who are advising the mayor on sites like this, making decisions on sites like this that are putting people in harm's way is doing a total disservice to the people of the city of Chicago. And they should not be employed and being paid for spending and wasting tens of millions of dollars. Now, just yesterday, I reached out to the governor's office and I'm still waiting to call back because if these people are not removed, from wasting taxpayer dollars, I'm asking the governor to come in and take over the entire, the entire migrant crisis here in the city of Chicago because we see today that we, can, we don't have the, the confidence, the capability to basically deal with this crisis that's hurting our city today. We're spending So uh, Alderman Beal uh, continued on, and this is a video from uh, WGN, uh, and Alderman Lopez also uh, chiming in on the uh, the crisis and uh, what he says is the lack of uh, uh, accountable leadership within the city of Chicago mayoral office. Failed in this moment. We cannot allow them to continue to drive policy here in the city of Chicago, putting not only the lives of those individuals at risk, but putting taxpayers on the hook for future litigation once those health issues that we know are probable impact the migrants whom we've welcomed. Additionally, those residents in Brighton Park around us here are owed an answer by the Mayor Johnson and his team as to why and what they are going to do with regards to the mitigation efforts when they were hauling toxic cancer-causing materials out of the community in open-air dump trucks. 
driving them through the neighborhoods to take them away from this site. This so, uh, is a he, travesty of he, leadership. He goes on to, to spell out who exactly he wants to see let go, but he also talks about how this crisis isn't all of a sudden a crisis now. Uh, this is something that uh, has been known since, well, 15 months ago. Going on during the mayoral campaign, this was going has been going on since August of 2022. This is not a new crisis, and everyone running for mayor knew that they were going to have to address this man this border crisis that was shipped to the city of Chicago. Mayor Brandon Johnson is the leader of the third largest city in the United States. He is a Democratic leader, and he has failed to put his power to work in Washington to demand that they correct their failures. Chicago taxpayers cannot continue to be on the hook for the federal government's failures, but also for the failures of our own government to manage crises like this. And Lopez also went on to talk about, uh, again, how the mayor says he's got some backup plans here, though the mayor apparently didn't spell that out to members of the media asking him questions earlier this week. Uh, but Lopez says that uh, whatever the plans are, obviously aren't good enough. As someone who volunteered space in his ward, I worked to provide Gage Park Fieldhouse in June to clear out the police stations of what at that point was 160 people residing in the police stations. 160. After we cleared out that state out, out the stations, 2,000 more people came to the city of Chicago. What this administration, like the one before it, has failed to do is create plans for both a short and a long-term solution to dealing with this crisis. Thinking that the federal government or the Republican governors are going to stop simply because we say don't come is so beyond short-sighted. And I don't believe for an instant that there's a B, C, D, E, or F because there never even was an A plan to get to deal with the migrants. So again, uh, that's uh, some of the uh, conversation that uh, some Chicago aldermen are having trying to get uh, individuals of the Johnson administration fired for how they handled the Brighton Park situation. Uh, obviously, we'll be watching that closely as well because you've got uh, the issue coming in front of the Illinois legislature with the possibility of a supplemental appropriation and uh, your tax dollars going to all of this. That's your uh, program here for Bishop on Air. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, follow along. And uh, if you want to support the show, you can check out bishoponair.com. Go to the store, see all the different things you can get Bishop on Air on. Uh, coffee mugs, T-shirts, bumper stickers. Um, we'll be uh, thinking of some other designs that are free speech free press associated uh so hopefully you can uh, support us that way uh but another way to support us is to tell your friends about it all right have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day 